Welcome to another episode here at the Mask and Health Solutions Podcast. I'm Conrad, and today we will be talking about none other than penis clamping. And how clamping works, the benefits, the do's and don'ts, and how to avoid injury. Alright guys, let's get into it. What is going on, peoples? Welcome to another episode. And um, today's episode, again, this will be more of a focused, uh, well, it's going to be focused primarily on, on clamping. We will discuss other things that you can do, obviously, in conjunction, and um, how clamping basically benefits you, right? Consider this a penis clamping 101, and it's basically getting to know the foundations, the ins and outs, how it works, how to do it properly, and how to avoid any types of injury. Because injury is bad, and I've been there before, and now well, I'll talk a little bit about that as well. <laughs> All right, guys. So first off, let's talk about what penis clamping is. All right. Basically, what it is, it's imagine occlusion training. I don't know if anybody's ever seen that, but, you know, occlusion training basically is where you make a tourniquet at the arms or the legs, right? Then you train with really light weights and you get a really, really big pump, a bigger pump than you would normally. And this is due to the occlusion. Of course, one of the key things here is you don't want to cut off blood supply completely, but you do want enough pressure so that you can really get that big pump, right? You really want to maximize the size of of your arms or, or the amount of blood that kind of gets trapped in there. But you want to make sure that circulation is still available so that, you know, your arm doesn't turn blue and fall off. <laughs> so what you want to do in this case, right, with penis clamping is that... You can either use your hand, right? You can use your hand for a little bit of a pulse and you just make the okay sign the same way that you would when you're jelking, right? You make the okay sign at the base and you hold it from there. You know, after you're done holding it, you kind of just release it and your penis will be more plump, more engorged. You'll see that the inner chambers of the penis have become expanded and because of this, the girth will increase. If you are to measure while it is in this position, or in this situation, you will see that, yeah, usually, you know, the girth of your penis will increase by about half an inch, right? But the best way to go about penis clamping is, A, you get some type of protective layer. You want, you know, like a silicone or latex kind of sheath, or you get a cloth, ace bandage, anything along those lines. You want to stimulate yourself to, to erect, and then what you do is, um, what you do is then put the clamps, the cable clamps on top. Right. So what do these cable clamps look like? Well, they're just normal, usually orange, red cable clamps. You get them at Home Depot, Walmart. You know, it really depends on where you live or you just go on Amazon. I'll add a link to that so that you guys can click on that and check that out as well. But these cable clamps are nothing exceptional. They're nothing fancy. It's just a plastic cable clamp. Right. But after you put that protective shield on, you're stimulated and you add a cable clamp, you will notice that this will do the exact same thing that your hand was doing. All right. When you do it with your hands, when you're hand clamping. And um, again, you do want to know or you want to be aware of, you know, hey, am I cutting off a little bit too much circulation here? Is my penis turning purple? Right. You do got to be aware of these things. I mean, I'm not saying that your penis is going to fall off, but, you know, excessive amounts of pressure, you know, you can you can pop some things <laughs> and it's not good. Believe me, it's, it's kind of scary. Right. But over time, what you can do is you start adding more clamps. The max that I would recommend, the max that I've ever done is three cable clamps. And that's usually where I leave it. You know, I don't know, maybe some guys will do four, five. You know, it's up to you. Right. For myself, you know, I've gone up to three. And that's kind of the highest that I've gone to. And I've seen very, very good results with that. Right. So an example of a clamping workout would be very simple is that a always do your warm up, always warm up. Don't ever, you know, not do your warm ups. Your warm ups are by far the most important part of any part of PE. You know, if you want to avoid injury, you want to make sure that you can really maximize your gains and and obviously gain as quickly as possible. Heat will cause expansion. That expansion, you know, will lead to you cementing big gains, whether you want in the length department or the girth department. And if you're jelking and doing a well-rounded PE workout, believe me, you can gain in both. And some guys will find that they are genetically predisposed to gaining in one or the other. It's kind of weird like that, but hey, you know, everybody's built differently. In the same way, some people can go to the gym with the exact same program and you'll see, you know, buddies start to develop very, very well while the other one kind of needs more work, you know. 
And that's just kind of due to genetics, obviously physical structure, you know, your own personal anatomy, you know, your own genetic predisposition. So it's important to note that. But, you know, if you are doing a proper PE workout, you know, you will gain faster if you add heat, regardless of what your genetic predispositions may be. Right. So don't ever, ever forget to not do the warm up. (laughs) Very, very important. Right. So you've done your warm up for five to ten minutes, whatever the case may be. Now you're good to go. What I would recommend is doing, you know, you could do some wet gelics as well. It may get a little bit messy, but if you have the proper materials for it, where, you know, you don't mind getting your cable clamps a little bit oily and um, you don't mind getting your protective shield, whatever it is. If it's latex or silicone, then, you know, it's fine. But if it's a cloth-like material, you'll find that you'll probably have to dispose of it sooner than later, right? Because it's going to get all nasty, right? But that being said, you know, after you do your warm-up, Oh, I would do your manual stretches. And in this case, we haven't gone over bundled stretches, but I would highly recommend you do bundled stretches as well. Get your tunica, legs, all that good stuff inside of your penis ready to go for the workout, right? And what you will do after you are done your manual stretches is obviously stimulate to about 40 to 60%, 60 to 80. You know, it depends on who you are. I myself like to go a little bit on the higher end. I just like the pump and the hang is better. Right. So I would do that. And then I would do my jelks. Right. I would recommend doing at least maybe time under tension. I would focus on about five to ten minutes. I find that that is sufficient. You know, I do write down reps, but I think that over time it's more important to focus on, you know, the time under tension that you do your jelks. You know, it's more beneficial to do five to ten minutes than they let's say do 100 reps and you do them rather quickly. You know, it's like, hey, well, you're supposed to take about four seconds there and you're not, (laughs) you know, it happens. I mean, we're all humans and, you know, I just find that it's better to regulate it that way to have better metrics for it, right? But that being said, do your jelks, five to 10 minutes. Warm up, manual stretches. Remember, always do the manual stretches. Get your legs, get everything ready to go in there. Next up, do your jelks. You know, you can do wet jelks or you can do dry jelks as well. I don't really like dry jelks as much, but you know what? It, it serves its purpose and they're excellent to do as well. But I would recommend if you're going to do about five minutes, definitely go with the wet jelks. And if you could, you know, take about two minutes just to dry yourself up. If you don't have the proper materials to do, you know, clamping with it on, you know, with plastic stuff and that, you know, you just dry yourself up, clean yourself up, and then you can proceed to do your clamping. All right. So you're good to go. You've done all the proper steps. Now we do the clamping. Clamping, exactly the same process as mentioned before. Now, if you're starting off, I would highly recommend you do no no longer than five minutes, man. Five minutes, one clamp, and that's it. Stimulate to about 80%. You know, you don't want to go too, too high. You also want to be mindful of of how your penis is really looking in that situation. If your boner is purple and blue, I would highly recommend stopping. (laughs) You don't want to keep it going to the point where it's like it's blue and you just keep going. You know... And clamping, like pumping, may lead to discoloration. That can be getting rid of. I'll do an episode on that in the future. Um, you know, you can use Arnica, which is hazel, some other stuff that just kind of the stuff you use for bruising. But that being said, if you do it excessively, then yes, you'll probably suffer some discoloration. So if you do want to avoid that right off the forefront and you don't want to do a skin peeling, you know, I would highly recommend that you just do five minutes. Gauge it. Check it out. How are you? You know, how is it looking down there? You know, can you feel your penis? Is it kind of to the point where it's like, hey, you know, I can't really feel anything there and it's turning purple and, you know, my penis is quite pale. (laughs) You know, you might want to do a double check. Right. So I would recommend you start off with five minutes, five minutes, gauge it, see how you feel. You know, it's kind of like, okay, you know, I feel I feel pretty good. You know, afterwards, I would recommend maybe doing about two sets of five minutes right off the bat, which may be a little bit higher than recommended for some, but I would recommend do two five minutes. See how you feel. Obviously, do not stimulate yourself to the point of pain. You want to stimulate yourself to the point where it still feels relatively good, but you can see good expansion, right? You're not going to see extreme expansion of two, three inches. No, no, no. No, You know, this right here is just going to expand you maybe half an inch. You know, and if you're just starting off, maybe even less, right? Because your penis is not used to it. It's not conditioned, right? You got to give it time, right? In between your sets, I think it's important to jelk again. You want to restore circulation. You want to, you know, you can even just edge if that's simpler for you or a good way to go about it. And then you do your next set and then you would do your warm down. 
And that would conclude, you know, a very, very rudimental, very simple uh, clamping workout. If you already have a PE exercise or workout program, you know, you could always implement that in a way that you see best fit. You know, I would always uh, recommend, man, when, when, it, when it comes to PE, you got to be comfortable. If it is not comfortable, you will not, you know, you probably won't do it and you probably won't make the gains you want. So I would highly recommend that you do invest on getting good, comfortable things that you can work with that will help you and lead to your success, guys. All right. But that's pretty much clamping in a nutshell. (laughs) There's not a whole lot to it. Like I said, this is a girth centric exercise. And if you do want to make your glands bigger, another thing that you can do while you're clamping is, you know, lightly squeeze right underneath the head. And you can hold that for an extended period of time as well. You will see that mushroom start to flare up, man. And ladies love the mushroom. (laughs) So definitely, definitely, you know, add it to your workouts. If you've been thinking about it, you know, give it a shot. But the most important thing here is to just be safe when you do it. Be safe, you know, do it. And when you decide to escalate or rev it up and make it a little bit more intense, you know, you want to up the ante correctly. It's all about progressive overload and it's all about listening to your body so that you can be successful in your PE endeavors and not hurt yourself. (laughs) Like I said, when I was starting off and I kind of like I, I kind of get overzealous whenever I see any bit of like gains or success in any any realm, pretty much of PE. And um, for myself, like I was clamping, I used two clamps or three clamps, I think. And, and then I just, you know, I was, I'm like, now nah, I got to stimulate further. I got to get more expansion, more expansion. And I actually saw like a little bit of blood come out. <laughs> You know, and um, that's kind of when I just laid off. I didn't do anything, you know, talked to the doctor. He's like, hey, you know, what were you doing? Why would you do that? And I explained it to him. And he's just like, oh, God. He's like, just, you know, give yourself time. Don't do that again. You know, don't don't in- <laughs> indulge in this practice whatsoever, right? That being said, I didn't listen. I continued doing it. But I did it in a way that was much more safe. And I made more gains. Like I've said before, man, when I started my PE journey, I think it was like 4.9 or 5 inches in a red girth, which is horrible. For me, anyways, you know, I just, I, I didn't realize what that really meant and, you know, the, the impact that it would have on my wife and, and, you know, and how women do need that for that vaginal stim- stimulation. So, you know, I, I really wanted to focus on on getting girth and obviously I was making gains and I implemented this and I got overzealous and, you know, now that I can look back and I can tell you guys, it's a very, very good workout. It's very effective. It's a great exercise to have in your toolkit. But, you know, you got to proceed with caution, right? Don't get overzealous. You start making a little bit of gains and, you know, hey, you know, I've been down that road as well. I've been down that road multiple times, well, about two, three times where it just, you know, get overzealous. So guys, just practice safety, you know, just concentrate on progressive overload, like the same way you would when you get to the bench press at the gym. You know, you don't you don't develop the ability to, you know, add 10 pounds to your bench. You're like, all right, let's add 400 pounds. Let's do this. <laughs> you got to give yourself time, right, guys? So, you know, just give yourself time. Give yourself the proper amount of time to heal as well in between workouts. If you do find that it taxes your penis, you know, pretty intensely, which it might for some guys, right? Certain exercise may tax you. Right. And the proper thing to do here is give yourself enough time to heal up. Make sure you use a stayer, though, post workout. If you are looking for more girth, right, get get yourself some type of cock ring, you know, whether you're using a hair tie, some type of contraption that will definitely help you out to obviously cement your girth gains. Right. So the next time you come, you're bigger and, you know, you clamp, you pump, you do whatever, and you'll just keep growing from there, guys. Also, another thing that I wanted to add to clamping, you know, that I found for myself is if you want to maximize the amount of girth that you can develop quickly, I would highly recommend, A, obviously adding heat, clamping, obviously one of the greatest workouts that you can do, jelking also, make sure you incorporate that, and pumping. If you are able to pump in conjunction with clamping, man, sky is the limit, you know, you'll see some big, big, big gains come from that, right, so... Like I said before, COVID kind of hit us to the point where I didn't really have a lot of privacy this year, but I was experimenting with that. And I did see, you know, about 0.2 inches in gains from, you know, pairing up the two. And if I had more time, believe me, I would dedicate at least three to five days a week to do that. Because the combination of these two, it's almost like you're working the inner chambers of the penis. And then that extrinsic pressure from pumping really hits, you know, the penis from all angles and and really, you know, it, it helps to make these girth gains. And, um... 
So I find I found that, you know, just combining pumping and clamping, you know, for for girth, you know, really maximizing the amount of girth that you can develop over time, jelking as well, make sure you get the good circulation in there will really maximize your gains. All right. So that's pretty much clamping 101. That's, you know, adding it with pumping, adding it with jelking, making sure that it's part of a good, well-rounded workout will obviously maximize your gains. This, again, my friends, is a very, very girth-centric exercise. So if you are looking for length, you know, I'd, I'd probably recommend to hold off just, you know, just for now. You know, you could add in a little bit of hand clamping here and there, hold for about 30 seconds, you know, experiment with it, of course. But I would highly recommend that if you are more focused on length, focus more on the length-centered exercises, all right? But... That being said, you know, give uh, give clamping a chance. <laughs> Over time, when you do want it, it's it's a great exercise. All right, guys, that pretty much concludes today's episode, which is just about clamping and how clamping can benefit you and how you can make gains in the girth department. Again, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or comments, please let me know below. Also, big announcement to make. That Mask and Health Solutions program that I've been working on for so long, I will have that finalized and completed. I'm going to say about second week of February. I'll give you guys a hard date in a bit. Just because I, I do have certain things that I got to work on and, you know, to make sure it comes out as best as possible. But I will have the complete beginners program. This will be a year-long program. Um, I have recommendations for all the exercises and all the different things that you can implement to obviously making gains. All right, guys, if you do want a free enlargement program, make sure to check out the website as well, MasculineHealthSolutions.com. I do got a short one there, six month program that you could definitely try out. You know, try it out. Let me know how it goes. Remember to take the before and after pictures because you're going to need them. <laughs> all right, guys, stay safe. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Well, that concludes another episode here at Mask and Health Solutions Podcast. If you want to learn more, check out more good stuff that we got available for you guys as far as uh, the blog goes and the written word. Be sure to check out MaskinHealthSolutions.com. Also, if you are interested in getting 20% off the program, aka the MHS Deep Foundational Beginners Program, with all kinds of good information. Um, be sure to sign up now and you will get 20% off at the time of its release. Also, if you want to get, you know, your devices and get stuff that you guys are just curious about or want to learn more about, you know, the device side of things, definitely check out totalmanshop.com for all your PE devices that, you know, that you may need. <laughs> all right, guys, stay safe. And again, have a great day.